Well, it's been just over a week now since we finished up racing Port to Port MTB 2018 and what a fantastic four days it was. The legs are feeling somewhat recovered now, uh, but the afterglow lives on. It was an incredibly good event this year. If you've ever raced Port to Port MTB before, it's time to come back and have another crack because the way that this event has evolved over the past few years is pretty special uh, and we think that the 2018 version was just fantastic. We loved every minute of it. There were plenty of highlights. Stage two, the all new stage, which took in Mount Sugarloaf and Killingworth, for us was probably the absolute standout. The event organizers listened to all kinds of feedback um, and chatted to plenty of the locals to get the lowdown on what was out there in that classic old single track bastion around Mount Sugarloaf and Killingworth. And it was unreal, a massive bonanza of old school single track, uh, heaps and heaps of flow and it was just a real standout day. That It started out with a big slog up to the top of Mount Sugarloaf, but from then on in, it was just absolutely grid-inducing, ball-tearing fun. Um, we just couldn't get enough of that day. Day four as well was just fantastic too. Uh, it's a superb course now, heaps and heaps of fun, running from the shores of Lake Macquarie down there at Swansea all the way up to Newcastle, uh, taking in, of course, Glenrock as well, but not just Glenrock, some incredible single track around the Redhead and uh, Whitebridge areas as well um, to the south of Glen Rock. So just a, a really good day and you can see why so many locals came out to get involved in uh, day four with the numbers swelling to over 700 riders on that particular day. Uh, that's actually pretty cool too. You can now race uh, either the full four days of Port to Port or you can do um, two days or you can just to choose to do the, uh, do the one single day if you want as well, which is great for all those people who might not be able to get time away from work or family to take on the full four days. The other highlight for us was seeing the racing um, between um, Brendan Johnson, the uh, defending champion, uh, and then Tasman Nan Curvis and Cameron Ivory as well. Uh, there were lots of people who were predicting a really, including us, um, a real battle between uh, Brendan Johnson and Cam Ivory, but the way it played out was really quite interesting to see with uh, Tasman Nan Curvis and the young Michael Potter able to drive things on the climbs uh, to the extent that only Johnson was able to hang with them and on some of those long climbs Cameron Ivory eventually popped and there are some big old climbs in Port to Port MTB. Anyhow it made for a really great race, came right down to the wire with only 10 or 12 seconds uh, separating Brendan Johnson and Tasman Nan Curvis in the end. In the women's field Holly Harris just so dominant. You can see why this young rider from Armadale is going to be such a star of the Australian cross country scene in the future and hopefully overseas as well. Uh, she's a, an incredible rider. The new event owners, Ironman, who obviously have a real pedigree when it comes to delivering huge and high quality events, did a fantastic job. Everything went off without a hitch. Great food, a good vibe, um, all those sort of things that are important to delivering uh, an event that is not just good on the track, but also a nice relaxing kind of feel and a, and a hassle-free kind of feel away from the track and um, after the racing as well. We are definitely going to be back to race this event in 2019. Having this event in our backyard is something that we're really stoked about. So we'll see you out there in 2019 and we really hope that you can join us for Port to Port MTB.